team cold blooded product of the glove. Mitten babies get it out the mud. Lame nigga paying for a hit. Me, you see, I get it out of love. Anything I did for the click, I hope they know I did it out of love. Switched up on me, I was sick. Balanced all my feelings with the drugs. Watch the soccer chilling with the plug. Helicopter circling the bus. What up, dog? True crew, what it do, my brother? You know what I'm saying? You know we back like cook crack. Charlie Ray 999 here. One more again with all my friends. You know what I'm saying? Peep me through the lens. We about to get into a video because, uh, happy Halloween, my niggas. If you felt, if you celebrate it, cool. You know what I'm saying? We about to get scary. And if you don't, cool. Get scary with us anyway. You know what I'm saying? Um, I put up a post last night talking about I want to do a scary video. One of the homies, Game X, pointed me in the direction of a scary video. It's kind of long, so we ain't going to do it all. But best believe. We about to do it here. We about to. There we go. Let's get into it. Hit that like and subscribe too, bro. Stop playing with me, man. We almost at 5K, you hear me? We almost at 5K. Yeah. I was looking for a car to buy for my son for his 18th birthday. I was searching all the typical car websites cars.com, eBay Motors. They were all overpriced as expected. Craigslist was the only place to find an actual deal. About a week into my search, I found an 03 Toyota Camry. It had 67,000 miles, no accidents, no damage, and good condition for only 3,500. This seems like... That's still too much, you know what I'm saying? That's still a bit much for that, but let's go. The steal for such a reliable car with such low mileage. The seller lived about 10 miles from me, which was a reasonable drive when looking for a car. I gave him a call to set up a time to come check it out. The man sounded normal on the phone. He assured me that there were absolutely no problems with the car. He introduced himself as Bob. I brought along 3500 in cash, even though I planned on wiggling down the price as much as possible. I pulled up the dirt road to Bob's property about 15 minutes early. It was a tiny little house with a decent sized property, only because I was a bit far from the nearest neighbors. The garage was open, so I walked over to- Nigga, hey, meet me at the Walmart, bro. Why are you going- I don't know, it's dark. Alright. See if anybody was inside, but except for an unusual amount of car parts, it was empty. The car was nowhere in sight. The only car on the property was an old pickup truck. I went over to the front door to check the house numbers. It was the right address. The doorbell button was missing, so I knocked on the front door. I knocked for exactly five minutes before deciding to give the man a call. So I dialed his number and I heard the sound of a cell phone ringing from inside the house. I was extremely confused at this point. Now I knew I had the right house. I didn't understand why, if he was home, why he wasn't answering. I decided I had to take a peek through one of the windows to see if anybody was inside. Peering through the glass, I couldn't really see much as it was pretty dark inside the house. I saw a very old-fashioned dining room set, but across from that, I saw somebody standing at the back door of the house. See, now you're starting to see shit. You being too nosy. Couldn't be me. The nigga not picking up the phone. Obviously, he in there dead. You know what I'm saying? I'm going home. I'm not playing around. I'm not about to play search and find. You know what I'm saying? Because what if I find some shit? Hell no. Staring outside. I figured that must have been Bob. So I knocked on the window, but he didn't even move. There was no gate or anything to the backyard. It was just a wide open yard since this wasn't a rural area. I simply walked around the house to the backyard. This nigga crazy. I didn't understand how he couldn't hear me. When I got to the back door, I made a shocking realization. The figure standing by the door was a taxidermied human being. I ran straight back the way I came and back to my car. I looked up one last time before driving off. The blinds to the window I had peeked into had been shut, but I could see two of the blinds bent open. Somebody was at that window watching me. You can probably guess I had the gas pedal to the floor the whole way home. The whole situation still makes no sense. All the car parts, the fact that there was no Toyota Camry, the taxidermied human being, the fact that there was no car there leads me to believe that whoever that man was wasn't planning on selling me anything. 
And that also leads to the disturbing thought that I was very close to becoming a lifeless statue staring out that man's back door. Well, he's a shady killer because he should have, you, you gave him hell, ample opportunities to knock your dumb ass out. But, you know, I digress. I digress. You made it out alive. Let's go. Next video. I like this. Let's, let's do it. Vintage Triple X. I was on tour trying to find some really deep websites. I was in a chat room where people normally shared links to deeper websites and weird pictures and videos, commonly illegal pornography. Some guy named Vintage Pervy Gay, yeah, Pervy Gay, let's get it. Triple X posted a link without describing what it was. I clicked on it and it took me to a black screen where a big video box eventually popped up with a play button. The video thumbnail was a dark room only lit by a TV screen. Out of curiosity, I clicked play and began to hear the sound of TV static in the background as lines of static slowly swam down the video screen. There was no seek bar on this video. Then, I noticed something slowly begin to emerge from behind the wall. It was a figure dressed in all black with some kind of black mask on as well. I started to suspect it was a jump scare video, and I thought I was right when the figure leaped out and ran to the screen in less than a second. It still got me, even though I was expecting it, but then it got strange. The person had their face in front of the screen, slowly moving around as if he could see me and was observing me. Then I heard a crackly, demonic voice say something. It came from the video. It repeated itself, and I could make the phrase out to be, ask me something. I was no. really confused. No, I tried no, typing no. something, but there was nowhere to enter text. Then he said, No, not the keyboard. Say something. I felt my heart punch the inside of my chest as he said this. I opened my mouth and mumbled the words, You can hear me? It responded with, Yes. I was uncomfortable cut now. Cut the computer off. Just I thought cut, it was a... cut the computer off. Just yank that shit up out the wall, bro. Throw that bitch away. You got to go get a new computer. Your shit been tampered with. No, bro. What? Hell no. I ain't sign. I ain't. Pre I ain't go through Skype. I ain't FaceTime you. Fuck. Fuck is hell no. Dude. Video. I pressed pause, but it didn't do anything. He said, "Don't try to leave. I want to talk." No, nope, you're a perv. I tried moving the mouse to He's the exit perv. button, but the mouse was frozen. In fact, none of the keys were responding on my keyboard. There was a long moment of silence before my webcam began flashing as if it were on and my face popped up on the screen. Oh. There, I got a picture of you now. Now just hang on while I get your address and then we can meet. Oh. I started to panic, smashing every key on the keyboard, Rip spazzing the mouse, up, but it did nothing. I had my finger on the power button, but it also didn't do anything. Oh. The computer wouldn't turn off. The voice was saying crazy things like, You're stuck here. I will find you. Don't even bother. I snatched the screwdriver sitting on my desk, unscrewed the four screws on the bottom of my laptop, and took out the battery. The computer finally turned off. I was gasping for air as if I just ran a marathon. I'm going everywhere with a clock now. You know what I'm saying? He just put a battery on my back. You feel me? Man... Anybody come up to me on some weird shit gets shot. And you know, my mama, this shit is crazy. My heart was pounding five times as fast as it should have. I have since left my laptop off after that and have resorted to using my desktop as my main computer. I'm sure by now nothing will happen. He definitely didn't have enough time to get my address. See? That's what happened when you being a little freaky boy. You know what I'm saying? You doing too much on the Reddit, just clicking links and shit. Hey man, he almost got abducted, messing around. Be smart, you gotta, you gotta be smart out here. We gonna do one more video, bro. That was kind of scary. You feel me? Let's let's see what the next video entails.
Eve to me is basically freedom. What the fuck? It's a giant open universe where you can do whatever. It was very common for me to be home alone at night, as I only lived with my dad, and his shifts would constantly shift from days to nights. Uh, this like happened that. around the time my dad was doing night shifts. I would stay up really late on these nights watching movies. It's always taken me a long time to fall asleep, so after turning off the TV to go to sleep, I probably laid there for a good half hour. Then, I heard a toy fall over in my toy closet. It was nothing too suspicious, but... It still creeped me out. But then the doorknob to my closet started to wiggle until finally unlocking the door. I hid under my covers, not making a sound. It was strange. I never understood that even as a kid, nigga, hiding under my hiding under my covers has never, ever been something I did to feel safe. You know what I'm saying? Cause I learned from ass whoopers. That don't work. They come through there, snatch them covers off your ass so fast. Kata! Ah! Kata! You know what I'm saying, bro? Kapow! You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, them covers don't do nothing. You feel me? Nothing. I don't be getting why they be doing that, bro. Come on. Quiet for a good two minutes, so I finally peeked my head out of the covers. There was a figure standing next to my bed, looking down at me. I screamed at the top of my lungs and began hugging the wall behind me. The figure looked out the window and then just walked away out of the room. I stayed in that position for like an hour before checking if he was really gone. The front door was left wide open, so it seemed he had left. I didn't get a minute of sleep that night. No shit, I wouldn't even be in that house, bro. Nigga, I'd have ran to a neighbor house or something. What the, what the hell was that? The story is from the point of view. Damn, that was quick. That was a quick ass story. We're gonna do one more. This should last one, okay? Of a 16 year old girl. I used to have a boy living next door to me that was obsessed with me. His name was Joey. Every time I would go outside, Joey would come outside as well, as if he were watching me through his windows, waiting for me. He was 17 and very weird, and he didn't seem to have any friends, as he was always home. I tried to give every sign possible that I didn't like this guy. But he wouldn't get the message. So I had to finally just tell him one day that I don't like him and to leave me alone. The look on his face that day is something that won't leave <laughs> me. It was the kind of angry look a toddler gives their parents when they can't have a toy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get you, bitch. <laughs> <coughs> oh, bitch, I'm gonna get you, yeah? Coming from a 17-year-old, that's much more disturbing. One night, my parents left me to watch the house. I was working on a school project when I felt my bed shift a little bit. I looked under my bed. I screamed as I saw Joey laying under my bed. I ran away while he tried to crawl out from under my bed. I ran to his house and rang the bell at least ten times, telling his parents about it when they opened the door. Joey never came out of my house, so I called the police. His parents begged me not to, but I ignored them. Out the of police here. found him still in my room and arrested him. I just shot his ass. I I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or not. Where are her parents? You know what I'm saying? Is she grown and living on her own? But if so, she should have shot his ass. And if she got parents, she should have ran into her parents' room and her daddy would have shot his ass. That's hell no. Talk about her parents begged me. His parents begged me to not do it. Please, you can, man, come in my house if you want to. I got 16 for you. Apparently, he admitted this wasn't the first time he had hid under my bed. They also found pictures of me scattered across his room. Wow. The most disturbing one was of me sleeping, and it was taken from inside my room. That's a lot, bro. That's a lot.
I was typing away on my keyboard when I heard a noise from outside my cubicle. It sounded like just a random crack from the walls or something. It's unusual in this building, but I didn't get too concerned about it. I resumed typing away and was once again interrupted by a sound. This time, the sound of a computer starting up. It caught me off guard. I, I was sure nobody else was working the night shift. I stood up on my chair to get a view over the cubicle walls. The glare of a computer screen in the dark was visible on a cubicle on the opposite side of the room. Then I did something stupid, something I regret. I asked if there was anybody there in a yell, hoping to get an answer from a fellow employee. But instead, I saw the glaring light of the computer monitor across the room turn off, and there was once again nothing but darkness on that side of the room. Man. I started getting nervous. Fuck that job. Ain't no job. I'm not gonna be the only nigga in no building. For, for work. Fuck that. I turned off the lamp and computer screen so that I wouldn't give away my position to whoever that was. I crouched down and tiptoed out across to a nearby cubicle. There was just utter sun. Really? I'd be high, bro. I probably would have just let that go. Like, man, I'm tripping. I got to start smoking all this weed. But this nigga, he over there tiptoeing, crouching down. He might be smart, but I don't know. I think I'd have just be like, man, I'm tripping. Silence. I sat waiting for something to happen for God knows how long, but I eventually decided the coast was clear. I tiptoed down past all the cubicles until I reached the opening near the exit door to the stairs and elevators, and that's when I realized that my fearful suspicion was true. There was a man crouched down behind a plant in the corner of the room, dressed in all black. I felt my heart sink as I noticed him, but it didn't seem like he knew that I noticed him. I turned back to the stairway door, there was no way I was going to wait for the elevator and take a chance. I casually opened the door and closed it behind me, proceeding to walk down the stairs. After making it down about two flights of stairs, I heard the door above me push open aggressively, followed by manic, echoing footsteps coming fast down the stairs. I raced down the stairs, running as fast as I could, all while the footsteps above me were getting louder. I finally made it to the first floor, raced through the lobby, and out the front door. Whoever was in there didn't follow me. I immediately called the cops, along with one of my bosses. My boss said no one was scheduled to work except for me. The cops scanned the place from top to bottom. There was no one in there. I couldn't help them out with any description other than he was wearing all black. Blood twist, this nigga was high as shit. And, and he just would start tripping. He started tweaking, bro. Some people can't handle the reefer. The flower's too strong for something. You know what I'm saying? Dog was just out of his mind. He, you know, it'd it be like that sometimes. He's a... Know your dosage, people. Know your dosage. Anyway, man, that was pretty scary. You know what I'm saying? Most of them was... You know what I'm saying? Kind of kind of creepy. A bit creepy. If you got creeped out a little bit, make sure you hit that like button. And subscribe if you haven't and you're new to the channel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I got new music out. Happy Halloween, everybody. Leave comments below. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me. What's shy? What's popping? Let's get this algorithm going again. And I'm probably going to be back at it every day. You feel me? But show me love, my baby. We out.